So this is when I say music of IP address. Say deliberately I gave this name music of IP address. Actually speaking, everything is so rhythmical. And once you will start calculating the IP addresses, very soon it becomes a, a very musical thing. It's, it's so beautiful that it would be a pleasure to calculate more and more IP addresses. Once we start calculating it effectively, it will be very helpful, especially even in your uh, real life. This is a brief introduction of myself. So all right, let's start with our topic. Say IP address, when we talk about, this is a topic which is related to, let's say networking. And when we say networking, that means when two or more devices they are communicating and they are sharing some information and they are sharing some resources. Now this is something which decreases the cost and it increases the speed. Any technology which is decreasing the cost and increasing the speed is never going to die. It will always be there. This is the reason that why networking is increasing and it will keep on increasing. Now when we say about devices when they are communicating, it never ever happens that the mail sent for say any celebrity it reaches to us by mistake. No, it never happens. Millions and millions of emails they are transferring every day but it always reaches to a specific destination. So the point is that whenever we talk about networking, this is so important and that is what is called as the identity. Identity. Every piece of hardware is identified. Now when it is identified, there has to be something like a human being. It's like the way we have got a name and then we have got a address. Anyone in the world is identified by both combination of both the things. It is very much necessary that there has to be a name and there has to be some address. So this name is giving a unique identity. The identity which is related to that person, the name of that person and address is his location. Right? This is for the person. And this is the location. So if it is the location only, so at your place, at your home, which has got a very specific address, but all the members, all the members, those who are staying with you, they will be having the same address, but their names will be different. Now, similarly, if we pick up a name, a very common name, let's say like Raj Patel. So that name is so common because there will be thousands and thousands of name but what really happens is everyone's address would be different. So something like that. Same thing happens over here. We divide this into two parts. One what is name and second the address. In case of computers, the name is like a MAC address. So when we say this MAC address, this MAC address is 
fixed the way name is fixed name really won't change same way the location that can change so the ip address so same way the way we say that this person is at this point of time at this particular address so same way our pc our laptop can be into different networks because its ip address is changing however its mac address will remain same right so that's why this is also called as a fixed address also called as the burnt in address bia burnt in address also called as the hardware address in case of ip address this is variable it will keep on changing depending upon where exactly the device is so our today's purpose is to talk about ip address now see there are two types of ip address one is ipv4 and second is ipv6 we have kept these two series one after the another because today after talking about ipv4 next sunday when we'll be talking about ipv6 if you have understood this thing properly ipv4 it would be much easier for you to understand ipv6 because technically speaking ipv4 which is a 32 bit address while ipv6 is 128 bits So it's not so that it is four times more complex because bits are increasing. No. The idea is it is based on hexadecimal system and the concepts are very different. So that's the reason that we'll be putting very proper understanding of IPv4 and based on that understanding when we'll learn IPv6 it would be much much easier. At the same time it would be very digestible. Okay. Now, though, say binary is something which is quite easy and say everyone must be knowing about it. But still, as a very fast revision, I am going for it. Plus, one more thing that many a time people ask that 1 KB is 1024 bits why so or 1024 kb it becomes 1 mb then this 1024 it keeps on going on and on and on from mb to gb to tb it, it keeps on going true they should have done it something like thousand right it becomes much easier but say humans as humans when we talk about any of the number let's say number 837 so what we say 837 that means this thing this thing and these three they are like this is 100 this is 10 this is 1 and if it is like 9837 so then we are talking about this as 1000 now see there is a pattern this is 10 raised to 0, 10 raised to 1, 10 raised to 2, 10 raised to 3 and so on. Anything raised to 0 is always 1. Right? This is what is called as the decimal system and the base is 10. The base is 10. Now, same way when we talk about digital systems digital systems they have got no emotions that's the reason that uh, in terminator that's uh, that sylvester stallone right he he said that yes hasta la vista and and then emotions no emotion and and it was not sylvester it was arnold schwarzenegger yeah it was arnold schwarzenegger right that <laughs> he said okay, no we don't cry because they have got no emotions there are only two things zero and one zero means no and one means yes true this means there are only two states and when there are two states so it is two raised to zero two raised to one two raised to two and so on so the base is in this case two now on the same grounds when next week we'll be talking about hexadecimal right 
in hexadecimal so it would be like hexa is 6 decimal is 10 so at that point our base would be 16 so we'll be working on the base of 16 but that is at a later stage over here let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 2 raised to 0 2 raised to 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so this goes to anything raised to 0 is 1 that's 2 4 8 16 32 64 and 128 now for binary the best part is that anything which we really want to convert into binary we just pick up the number let's say any number say 93 now 93 we want its binary all we need to do 128 no this is too big 64 yes we take 64 now 64 plus 32 it is like it is a sort of puzzle we have to make 93 in such a way so that any of these numbers we can use only once but 64 plus 32 if we take it becomes 96 no so we won't take it we won't take it we'll take this now 64 plus 16 we take this so this becomes 80 80 plus 8 this becomes 88 88 plus 4 this becomes 92 we don't want this it will become 94 and we take this so done all the numbers which we have taken will say 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 that's the binary of 93 when we say 1 or when we say 0 this means the current is passing or current is not passing that's it because they have got only two states either that gate is open or that gate is closed eight bits is one byte so every piece over here is called as bit every piece so this is we are dealing with one two three four five six seven and let's say these are seven bits right these are seven bits if the number is more then it will become eight bit but the point is bit stands for binary binary digit bit stands for binary digit and this ipv4 what we are talking about we said that this is 32 bits now these 32 bits they are very systematically arranged they are divided into four parts obviously equal four parts eight bits each when eight bits are there then it is called as octet so there is octet 1 octet 2 octet 3 and octet 4 so total it becomes 32 now this is the first octet in which we are very much interested the first octet this first octet this first octet we just open it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now if I reserve this thing as 0 this means it is fixed this is fixed we can't change it and rest of the bits they can be either 0 or they can be 1 but the idea is this entire piece that is from this point to this point all the bits they should not be 0 all the bits should not be 1 now why we are doing this we are going for the calculation of class because IP address is divided into class A class B class C class D class E which is for experiments but these classes they are not defined like uh, that class A is like 1 to 75 class B is like 76 to 150 no 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 they are not done like this they are not like this there are specific numbers so in order to understand why such numbers because numbers are a bit crazy there are very strange numbers 
But when we see the science behind it, we'll understand that how systematic the whole process is. So over here, we'll calculate that only. So over here for this entire string, all we need to do is we have to find out what is the lowest possible number and what is the highest possible number with these rules which we have to follow. The rules are like all these bits, that is all these eight places, they should not be zero. All these places, eight places, they should not be one. So starting from this, zero, and let's say for the lowest number, obviously we'll be putting all zeros. Let's put all zero, 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 zero. Wait, wait, wait. Over here, we are breaking this law. All should not be zero. All right, let's put one because then it is the next smallest number. Calculation of this is easy because one is just one. So we start with one. Now for the highest number, for the highest number, let's say these are the three places. And in the decimal system, if we say which is the highest number, so we would say, how about eight, 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 no, someone would say, no, there can be 889. Yeah, there is a bigger number. So what would be the highest possible number, highest three digit number? Highest three digit number would be 999, right? 999. Nine, nine. No number can be bigger than this. But what if, if I restrict that you can use only up to two digit, that is zero or one. So then we'll say the highest possible number would be one, one, one. Good. This would be the highest possible number. So with the same intention, we start putting one, 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 one. And here also we put one. Can we? Yes, we can because there is a zero. So that is protecting us from breaking this law that all should not be one right so that is helping us good so let's calculate in that case because we need to see that it has to be put into put into decimal system okay so here it is 1 2 4 8 16 32 and 64 i always say that these binary calculations they are so easy all you need to do try to first figure out can i add alternate numbers are they there yes 64 plus 16 would be 80 a round number 32 plus 8 would be 40 a round number 4 5 6 7 so this is 7 80 plus 40 that is 120 plus 7 that comes to 127 so technically speaking we have got the answer fine but this 127 is a very specific number. It's like a reserved number. It's like a reserved number, the number which has been kept for self-diagnostics to test your own interface. And it is not only like 127. Normally what we do, we just give ping 127.0.0.1. Right? That's what we do. And if the ping is successful, we know that our network card is working. But how about if we give this ping 127.109.33.114. Can we do it? We can. It really doesn't matter what address we take. It has to be like 127.xxx. Any number we can go for except there is only one exception. We can't ping. We can't ping this number 127.255.255.255. That's it. Only this won't be possible. Otherwise, you put any number and it will sail through. If your interface is okay, network interface card is okay, it will sail through. It will go perfectly fine. Right? So that's the reason that this 127 is absolutely reserved for self-diagnostics. So that's why we won't include it in our class A of IP address. And that's why we'll shift from 127 to 126. And that's our class A. Right? That's our class A. 
so initially we reserved zero then we'll reserve one zero then we shall reserve one one zero see there is a pattern then one 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 zero see the pattern correct there is a pattern this was for class a now see how we do it for class b c d right and it would strictly follow this pattern so here it is for class b class b right we take 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's reserve 1 0 this is fixed our lowest number and the highest number and we start with all zeros so 0 0 0 0 0 0 yes possible because there is 1 and value of this is 128 so lowest possible number is 128 that was easy the next one the highest number right the highest number so this would be 1 1 1 1 sorry that this is reserved so we can't put this thing one okay let's erase this yeah okay so let's put one 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 and one this much is reserved so again we can put rest of the digits as one so over here it would be 128 64 is something which we are not taking this would be 32 16 8 4 2 1 right so 32 plus 8 that is 40 16 plus 4 that is 20 and this is 3 so 128 plus 40 plus 20 so this is 60 it becomes 188 plus 3 190 191 right 191 so here it is 191 that's our range that's our range and this thing is what's called as the class b so class b is 128 to 191 so we talked about two classes at this till this point of time class a which was 1 to 126 and 127 was reserved for self diagnostics class b we said 128 to 191 now this reminds me of one another special ip address which we should really talk about and this ip address is what is called as the apipa automatic private IP address allocation what really happens is that if there are more number of PCs and if we are going for manually giving IP address to everyone it becomes a pain so that's why we have got a server this server which is called as the DHCP server dynamic host configuration protocol right it is dynamic host configuration protocol now this particular server server is someone who gives now this server will be giving IP address to all the machines automatically on first come first serve basis now it is like you have to create a scope it is called as the scope scope is nothing but it is like a range so within that range it will keep on giving IP address and everyone would be happy because say currently even when you see when what you are your your phones your cell phones or your your pc your laptops you are not giving ip address but that wi-fi router which is sitting over there it has got the dhcp configured so the moment you go you connect to that wi-fi you are given one ip address and that's it you are connected now let's say you travel from your home to your friend's place now once you go to your friend's place you are not changing your IP address or you are not making any configurations all you are doing is okay, just give me your Wi-Fi password you connect to that Wi-Fi and that Wi-Fi router is giving you another IP address because that is also configured with DHCP configuration so that's how 
DHCP itself is a huge topic because it is like it's not so that it gives only IP address it gives IP address subnet mask gateway it will give those DNS addresses so many things but the point is at this point of time we say that it is giving IP address now for some reason if this DHCP server is not available what I'm telling is this DHCP server for some reason it is not available anything can go wrong the switch which is getting connecting it with the rest of the network right that switch goes down something wrong with happened with the cable right rats did their dinner on this cable right so they, this DHCP is not working something happened to the power supply of DHCP something got corrupted right it was attacked there was some now rogue DHCP server some other DHCP server has taken over so many things can happen but the whole idea is if it is not available not available then all these clients what they say that chalo enough of waiting let's pick up one IP address and start working and this address is what's called as the APIPA it is 169.254.x.x when i say x that means it will be ranging from 0 to 255 so it can happen like one i one would say that i'll take 169.254.11 he'll say fine second one will say i'll take 169.254.11 he'll say no i have taken this one one so he'll say okay i'll take something else and he'll take say two and that that's in fact the protocol that's how they pick up these IP addresses but one thing is very important that everyone would be falling into this range so this 169.254 is once again a reserved sort of IP address which is meant for a PIPA automatic private IP address allocation rest of the IP addresses they all will be for class B and they are used as per our discussion of its range what we are telling about this this right this so that was the range of class a class b 1 to 126 and 128 to 191 we move on to the third point again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's reserve initially we reserved 1 0 then we reserved one zero initially was zero then one zero this was for a this was for b for c we reserve one one zero that's for class c this much is reserved same formula lowest number highest number let's safely put all of them as zeros no worries because we are not breaking the law this is 128 and this is 64 128 plus 64 is 192 so that's fine that's the lowest number going for the highest number highest number would be let's put all of them one 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 because there is zero everything safe now say some total one 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 some total of all of them is 255 it is 255 right because this is 128 plus 64 this is 192 plus 32 is 224 224 plus 16 is 240 240 plus 8 is 248 248 plus 4 is 252 252 plus 2 is 254 and last one is 1 that is 255 right so it is 255 now over here this value is 32 so one is we calculate 128 plus 64 this is 192 plus this 16 etc etc or we can go like say because this is 32 and we are not using it so minus 32 and it would fetch the value 223 so even that can be done so over here this would be our highest number 223 and that's nothing but class c right that's class c all right moving further one one two three four five six seven eight this time reserving one 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 zero this much is fixed 
so when this is fixed and we want to go for lowest number and the highest number so lowest number obviously 000, zero, zero right so this is 128 64 32 so 128 plus 32 is 160 and 160 plus 64 so it gives us 224 224 for the highest number for the highest number let's put all of them one and over here yes it is the 16 which is not in use right so 255 minus 16 that gives us 239 so that's 239 and this is class class D so our entire summary is class A class B class C class D class E and see one interesting thing I tell you this is from the medical point of view sometimes say we are very sincere we listen very carefully when we listen very carefully it's it's surely a good thing but say over here when we are studying online as it appears over here it is absolutely valid and it is a good practice to speak to shout no problem because that way more and more senses are involved so it's like you don't have to read the things again and again you will always remember now today to we are this topic is ipv4 but later on as we'll be learning more and more complex topics into our this master class tax series so once the topic is discussed it is absolutely fine to speak off because when you speak more more senses would be involved so over here as i say that okay class a so then it is like you should shout to that level that i should be able to hear you directly <laughs> right so it is like one two 126 127 was for self diagnostics this is 128 to 191 in between there was a pipa a pipa was 169 254.0 x dot x right it was x dot x yeah x dot x and why when this thing will be available it would be available when dhcp is not there not reachable not available due to any of the reasons the during this entire path then class c class c would be 192 to 223 then this is 224 to 239 and finally this is 240 onwards this e is okay e is for experiments e is for experiments now this class a class b and class c they are for commercial use right all our commercial use all our say calculations all our setup of networks it is used this class d has got specific meaning and which is called as the multicast so this takes us to the level that what exactly are these now see for the types of communication right for the types of communication we have when it is one to one it is called as the unicast it is called as unicast when it is one to everyone to all it is called as the broadcast so these two terms they are quite easy now comes multicast when it is one to a specific group to a specific group then it is called as the multicast now as we'll be understanding the routing protocols right routing protocols means routing it came from the word path that is path formation it means that as you are sending your mail from your PC and then it is going all the way to 
your friend's PC, but in between there must be several routers, there would be several service providers, right? There would be chances of having satellite also in between is so high, but it reaches because there is a formation of path. It is the path formation. It will reach to that destination only where you said. So this path formation, technically it is called as the routing, formation of path. It came from the word route or the path. Now there are several of such protocols. Now these protocols like routing information protocol, RIP, then say IGRP is no more in use, but say OSPF, open shortest path first, then EIGRP, enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. All these routing protocols, they work in such a way that they actually talk with each other. Yeah, there is, there is a language, right? There is a language by which these routers, they talk with each other. So when one router, R1, this is another router R2, this is third router R3. But if these two routers, that is R1 and R2, these two routers we have configured OSPF and this is OSPF, right? Open shortest path first. But this we have configured, let's say it is on RIP, routing information protocol. So these two routers, right? Let's change the color also. Yeah, now it is okay. <laughs> so these two routers, they would say, Acha, we are talking on OSPF. He should not be able to listen. So this is like a personal talk between both of us. He said, Acha, there is one more router. He is also R10. He is also an OSPF. Acha, OSPF. So then he is our friend. Yes, let's talk with him. Right? So they make a group. The point is that though they are physically connected, but they won't communicate. This is the beauty of what's called as the multicast. Multicast is one to specific group. Now, in case of OSPF, say there is designated router, basic backup designated router, etc. But they all would be using 224, 005, and 006. These are the two multicast addresses which are reserved for OSPF. No one else can use this. Similarly, there is dot ten, dot nine. They are for EIGRP, RIP, etc. So the point over here is that everyone is given these specific multicast address. Now, two twenty four. If you see two twenty four, it falls into the group of class D. So class D is for multicast, while class A, class B, and class C they will be taking the role of unicast and a broadcast. Fair enough. Okay. Public and private IP address. This is vital. For right now what you are watching because this stream is flowing via internet because it is flowing via internet that's why we need to use public ip address and because it is public ip address that's why we have to pay for it but we say we are not paying. Yes, you are paying. You are paying to your service provider, whether he is your cell phone company or he is your broadband, anyone, but they are charging something. So that is what they are providing you. In order to give you internet, they actually, they are handling these public IP addresses. In case of private, these private, they are completely free. But then we can use it only for our internal network. So in my room, if I want to connect my three laptops, that's fine. I can use these private IP addresses. So this boils down to the question that which are the IP addresses which are available free. For class A, it is 10.x.x.x. .x .x. We talked about, right? 
that x is 0 to 255 5, any number but the moment it is checked that first octet is 10 all right this is the private IP address so it will stay inside the network it will not go on internet for class B 172.16 first octet 172 but second octet 16 to 31 only only a specific piece of cake is given to him if it is 15 to so no it becomes public if it is 32 it becomes public it is chargeable so 172 16 to 31 and x dot x that much piece is free and the third is for class c class c it is 192.168.x.x dot .x. so these are the ip addresses which can be used internally for internal networks and they are all free okay so we talked about IP address now there is one more thing there was unicast broadcast multicast we talked about it but then there is something called anycast also now this anycast is one to the nearest and this is the speciality of IPv6. So next time when we'll be talking about IPv6, at that point we'll be talking more about Anycast. So right now, just to avoid any confusion, we discuss that what exactly is Anycast. Otherwise, in-depth discussion next Sunday. Coming back to our IPv4. So whenever we give IP address, Right? We give some number, let's say 192.168.10.1, we give one IP address and then next there is something what is called as the mask. Sometimes it comes by itself also. But what exactly is this mask? Now in order to understand this mask, I always use this example that okay, take a piece of paper right, and then let's make some holes for eyes this hole is for nose and this is for our mouth right now so we have to put a mask but at this point of time we are not putting that mask right because now when you say that mask immediately that that mask which is covering the face comes in front of us but over here say when we want to make it we'll be punching holes over here so piece of paper is here right this is the piece of paper and then there are holes where there is eyes where there are eyes nose and the mouth now if you digitally convert it so we can say wherever the paper is present we'll call it one wherever the paper is not present we'll call it zero right we'll call it zero so this is like a digital representation of the mask mask is something which is covering it true okay so over here remember this part in IP address there would be two types of bits there would be a network bit and there would be a host bit network bits are one and host bits are zero okay so let's see it with more clarity class a yes we said that there are four octets each octet is 8 bit 8 bit means say if this is for network that means those 8 bits would be 1111111111 yes we said that network bits they are 1 all right the rest of them they are host bits host 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 bits are all zero so zero 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 right eight zero similarly all zeros here all zeros here 
and we know that when everyone is 1 1 1 1 so this would be 2 55 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 this is nothing but what's called as the default mask what this mask is telling this mask is telling that okay whatever the number you wrote but this first octet would be representing the network and these three octets would be representing the host bits so that's the reason that in case of class a right in case of class a we have got network bits are 8 and host bits they are 24 this is fixed okay for the class b and for the class c if i say this is 16 16 and for class c network bits are 24 and host bits are 8 with this logic if it is 255.0.0.0 so here we are dealing with two octets am i right we are dealing with two octets octet 1 octet 2 they are network they are network this is host this is host so it will become 255.255.0.0 and over here our three octets they are network 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 and last one is host so it would be 255.255.255.0 collectively all of them they are called as default mask because we have not changed it we have simply accepted that whatever is given as a standard one more important thing that instead of writing 255000 we can also write it like slash 8 what slash 8 is slash 8 is nothing but another method of writing default mask or another method of writing mask what it is telling is number of bits which we are using for network for network we are using 8 bits so that's why slash 8 number of bits which we are using over here for class b 16 so yes we'll write it slash 16 number of bits which are used for class c 24 so we'll write it 24 this is for default mask now these numbers would change right these numbers would change but there has to be a reason behind how to change them so in order to understand it let's see some very interesting calculations now this is let's start with class c one example say 100 192.168.10.0 slash 24 this tells us that this host component this host component is zero it means we have got the liberty to put the number from 1 to all the way up to 254 why 254 why not 255 because when we make 255 this means everyone would be 1111 1111 this means this would be a broadcast and that broadcast address cannot be given to any of the host okay so this is network portion and this is host so what's the formula the formula is 2 raised to number of bits or i should say number of host bits minus 2 minus 2 because all cannot be 0 all cannot be 1 so we eliminate those two cases so over here we have got 8 bits 8 bits minus 2 2 raised to 8, 2 raised to 7, we calculated it was 128. So this becomes 256. 256 minus 2, this comes to 254. Well, 254 is a decent number if we have got so many computers in our lab. Fair enough. Think about class B. 
in class p there are 2 raised to 16 it will become 16 because it has got 16 bits for network and it has got 16 bits for host 16 bits it is not just the double right so 256 was at 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and this was 16 so this is 256 512 1024 2048 4, 4, 6, 6, 65,000 minus 2, still it is 65,34, six, a huge number, a huge number. And then when we talk about class C, which has got 24 host bits, 24 host bits, and this is 2 raised to 24, that comes to 16.7 million, a huge number. Now these are the number of PCs available per network number of PCs per network none of the network they can be so big that it has got 16.7 million flat on one flat network no even even the devices won't be supporting such huge networks so in that case it's like a waste of IP address and especially if you are paying for it right if you are using the public IP addresses and then after paying in dollars or rupees and if they are getting wasted so there is no fun solution that solution is subnetting subnetting it's like it's exactly like that if we have got a huge cake right let's say 10 kilogram of cake then we can't eat it alone right we divide we divide it amongst our friends and family members so when we divide we say that okay everyone will be getting exactly the same size right everyone would exactly be getting it of the same size so then who would you say that okay this is one this is two this is three and this three is someone like me right he'll say that's but i want to eat first right i give me my share i want to eat first so i will be told by you that okay wherever this two ends and this four begins this in between portion is yours have it and i would be very happy right yes you gave me the range you gave me the range that you eat from here to here now see if you really practically do it right this is what i would do right this is what i would do right i might sneak into even this much portion that okay i thought that four was ending over here and if you give me some more time i might reach up to this area but our pcs our computers right they are very sincere they don't do like this right whatever the range which they has been defined for them they will stick themselves to that much only so let's see a practical example of subnetting because see if we go into the theory of subnetting that you borrow this from here there instead let's do it right it will make every concept crystal clear so here it is say 172.16.0.0 remember 0.0, .0. this is 172 172 is falling into the range <coughs> sorry 172 is falling into the range from 128 to 191 this means this is class b if it is class b this is network this is network this is host and this is host right and subnetting tells only one thing that you do subnetting by borrowing host bits you borrow host bits go to host bits and tell them that boss give me few bits we want to make subnet 
तो देन होस्ट दे आर सो गुड दिल से ओके टेक टेक सम बेट्स सो लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जाम्पल वन सेवेंटी टू सिक्सटीन जीरो जीरो इज अवर नेटवर्क एंड वी हैव गॉट वन सेल्स डिपार्टमेंट वी हैव गॉट सेकेंड अवर मार्केटिंग डिपार्टमेंट राइट वी हैव गॉट से आर एंड डी डिपार्टमेंट एंड वी हैव गॉट वन से एग्जीक्यूटिव डिपार्टमेंट एनीथिंग लेफ्ट आउट ओके ह्यूमन रिसोर्सेस राइट सो वी हैव गॉट दीज फाइव डिपार्टमेंट वी हैव गॉट द आई पी एड्रेस दैट नेटवर्क एड्रेस वन सेवेंटी टू सिक्सटीन जीरो जीरो सो दिस इज अवर केक एंड दीज आर ऑल वी वी वॉन्ट टू ईट so it is said that we'll be dividing this cake into five parts so that everyone should be given a specific range and they should eat from that so done the default mask as it is class b it would be what you can shout 255255.0.0 or we can write it like slash 16 okay now starts the calculation we have got five departments so that means we have got five cake eaters so that means we have to make five parts so this means five subnets this is our requirement for whom 172.16.0.0 okay five subnets For subnet, we said that borrow host bits. So host bits would say, "Okay, boss, I never said no. Bolo na, kitni bits chahiye? How many bits you want?" So we said that let me calculate. The formula is two raised to x minus two is equal to five. Now this minus two right now I am telling deliberately because we said that all bits cannot be zero, all bits cannot be one. right now i don't want to confuse you with what is called as the subnet 0 we'll be covering we'll be talking about this subnet 0 next week till next week you'll be practicing and understanding this thing so crisply and then when we'll introduce subnet 0 concept you will be at most happy because you will be knowing how to deal with both types of networks so right now let's stick to this right so 2 raised to x minus 2 is equal to 5 what it is x is nothing but number of bits to be borrowed what will go to host part and say okay, okay boss give me these many bits and what is 5 5 is number of subnets needed number of subnets needed good so 2 raised to x is equal to 7 now x it has to be an integer value we can't make it in decimals so we'll say x is 1 so in that case 2 raised to 1 is 2 no it is far less okay let's make it x is 2 Two raised to two is four. No, still less. Okay, how about three? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. So let's borrow. Let's borrow three bits. This is where the subnet mask will come into picture. Or in other words, currently it is our default mask, right? So we call default mask class B. We are dealing with so two five five two five five. We tell them. that yeah you are network well you are network but say we won't touch you but you tell these host that we don't want more but just 3 bits to so, 3 bit do na to so, he'll say okay 3 bits would be given to you but say over here again they are like humans only right i have got say 3 very nice fountain pen but if someone would ask 
दैट कैन आई बोरो अ पेन आई लुक लेफ्ट एंड राइट एंड देन दैट कोने में पड़ी हुई दैट फालतू बॉल पेन राइट विच इज बेयरली राइटिंग दैट आई एल गिव टू ओके टेक दिस राइट ऑब्वियसली आई वॉन्ट गिव माई दीज पेन दैट्स वॉट एग्जैक्टली हाउ दीज नेटवर्क ऑल्सो बी हैव इनफैक्ट से ऑल दोज राउटर्स ऑल दोज स्विचेज दे ऑल आर लाइक ह्यूमन बींग्स right they they have got got their own language they do all sorts of conspiracy they make all sorts of business to talk with each other very much like router in fact you will see that there are some terms like that this protocol is very noisy right now now just just we are deviating slightly because i could I really cannot stop myself but this there is a rip protocol now this rip protocol is you know something like and in fact there was such one such person who 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 i really know if you meet that person in the morning and you just tell him kare saab kaise ho and then he'll start kare sir main savere aaj 6 baje utha aur uske baad socha tha ki exercise karunga पर फिर ब्रश किया फिर ना वो कमर में थोड़ा दर्द होने लगा था फिर मैंने वो दूध पिया एंड देन विल से कि ओके जेंटलमैन व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम नहीं सर प्रॉब्लम तो ये था कि वो बैक पेन हो रहा था पर अभी ठीक है अच्छा बाय नाउ इफ यू मीट हिम इन द इवनिंग आर अगेन हिल स्टार्ट स्ट्रेट अवे दैट आई वेक अप एट आई वोक अप एट सिक्स ओ क्लॉक एंड देन होल का था यू नो दिस इज इफ दिस सीम्स फनी then there is something like a rip routing information protocol this is router 1 <laughs> this is router 2 both these routers both these routers every 30 seconds they would actually do the entire katha it's like if there are three networks connected network 10 network 20 network 30 and router would say ke hey router 2 you know i have got network 20 network 10 network 20 network 30 router 2 if it is connected then let's say this is network 40 right so he'll say i got 10 20 30 40 40 router would say really right i have got network 60 network 70 and network 40 and every 30 seconds even if there is no change they'll keep on discussing this thing every 30 seconds so whenever i really teach this thing it reminds me of that person who always used to say like entire katha and that's the reason that these routers they are called as the very noisy pro routers very noisy protocols these protocols are like. and the best part is still best is yet to come these routers they are like that let's say you are here you are router 10 दे विल कम टू यू ऑल्सो एंड विल से अच्छा सर अच्छा मैडम आपको पता है आई हैव गॉट नेटवर्क सिक्सटी नेटवर्क सेवेंटी नेटवर्क फोर्टी यू विल से आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड यूर लैंग्वेज आई एम ऑन ओ एस पी एफ दे विल से अच्छा कोई बात नहीं बट आप मेरी बात तो सुनो एंड देन दे विल से दीज थिंग्स टू हिम ऑल्सो देन केम द रिप वर्जन टू एंड रिप वर्जन टू दे सेड दैट बाबा डोंट टॉक टू दोज हु आर स्ट्रेंजर्स जस्ट रिस्ट्रिक्ट योर सेल्फ टू these routers who are on version 2 and that was multicast so that they started communicating only with those who have been configured with version 2 of rip but rip version 1 or just a rip version that rip he was literally like this person right even if he is not knowing he will go and say i woke up at 6 o'clock <laughs> okay so coming back to this so where are we right now we are at this point 172160 we have got five departments five departments means five subnets five subnets means we calculated that we would like to borrow three bits they said that you can't touch network you have to borrow bits from host all right so we went to we went to our mask 255255 And one two three four five six seven eight dot one two three four five six seven eight. And these host bits, they are like me. They'll say, "I'll not give my best pen. I'll give you something which I am not using." So over here, these are the bits which are called as the least used bits. 
they'll say because we are not using it take them right how many you want three all right granted three so now we have got this is the portion of subnet and this is the portion of host but one more change we said that when we write slash 16 so it means it is representing number of network bits add something to it it also represents number of network plus subnet bits right so in this case as such if you see when we start borrowing these three bits so it becomes slash 16 plus 3 this is network this is subnet and it becomes 16 17 18 19 slash 19 this would be our new subnet mask we won't call it default mask we'll now call it the subnet mask right and it is slash 19 now slash 19 we calculate so it was 255 255 and those three bits which we have taken over here 128 64 32 this is 160 plus 64 so this gives the value of 224 rest of the bits they all are zero so this is 255.255.224.0 this is our subnet mask done first portion complete now we move on to the second part in second part where is it where is it say yeah here it is in this because they are our executives so they say that we should be given the priority so first let's find out the range of us so this is like we are dealing with subnet number four okay all right we go back and we reach here yeah so this is our next mission range of fourth subnet when we say range range means first to last that is our range in other words when we go to executive department there would be several computers what ip address should be given to all those computers that's what is called as the range so here it is this is how we now calculate we have got this much information 172.16.0.0 255.255.0.0 it is our subnet mask right we have got this much piece of information and this was calculated with five subnets requirement that was our requirement and for that we borrowed three bits we want to find out the range of fourth so what would be the binary of four binary of four would be very easy right tick 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 this is one this is two this is four so we take this we don't take this we don't take this so binary of four would be one zero zero so that's a binary of four now call our network because say subnet mask is something once you have calculated now for any given situation but it is fixed whether you calculate the range of first network second network third fourth fifth subnet subnet mask would remain same for everyone so over here 172 16 literally think like this network network that is something which you cannot touch and then comes the host bit one two three so then immediately will jump are no they are not host they are our subnet bits so he'll say why ask default ask subnet mask see see over here three bits are one 
so their subnet mask is telling that these bits are subnets so then this network would say okay take that what would you like to put we'll say put this one zero zero rest all are zero zero one two three four five six seven eight then one two three four five six seven eight because the rest of them they are all host so we don't want to disturb them this is the portion which we have borrowed so we'll take that this gives us 172.16.128.0 this is fourth subnet header when we say subnet header that means this subnet header is really representing the entire subnet that means this number is actually representing the entire executive network so for some reason if we block this then all our executives are blocked this is the meaning right but again those ex executives would say that we are least bothered with this number what address should i really give to my pc so yes we would say that's what you are calling for the range first to last all right so let's go this way and we remove this for the first host right for the first host i'll redraw this thing one two three four five six seven eight dot one two three four five six seven eight mm. so for the lowest number that is i'll put all zeros i'll put all zeros and last one as one because that's how it would be the lowest possible number so it would be 172 dot 16 dot 128 dot 1 right last one would be 1 so far easy now comes the last host last host means it will be the largest number the largest number means to make the highest number will make all the host bits remember we are dealing with host bits all host bits one we won't be touching anything which is in subnet so 1 1 1 1 1 one 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 this also one no it will become broadcast so we will put zero and now it is an art to calculate this number one two four eight sixteen so sixteen plus four twenty eight plus two ten so it would be twenty plus ten thirty and this is thirty one add this 31 into your subnet header right so this is 172.16.159.254 254 because this last one is zero right so this is what is called as the range so if you give ip addresses into the executives department from 172 to 16 128 1 to 172 to 16 159 254 they all would be and with and with the subnet mask of slash 19 or 255 255 224.0 so that's how the networks are divided to make this thing still better we calculated this thing for class B, right? Done. Let's take one example of class A. Let's say this is 20.0.0.0. .0 and this time we take that let's say we are super rich. We have got giant company and we have 50 departments, right? feels good 50 department and then we want to figure out that what would be the range of 36th department yes this is what we want so with this try by yourself 
or as I'm writing, try to speak aloud that this is class A. Class A, so it's default mask. Because if you go methodical, why I am repeating same thing, right? Because if you go methodical, every time, even if you calculate, but in the brain, there, were, there are several shortcuts as we'll proceed, right? As we'll proceed, I'll show you such shortcuts that you should be able to calculate this thing within literally five seconds. And this, is, this would be of utmost importance when you will be going for any of the hacking or any of the investigative thing. Because there just by looking at those numbers, you'll figure out, okay, okay, this particular number is not falling into this range. Within split second, you'll be able to say. But the way we say that, yes, it is a smart work, but behind every smart work, there is hard work. I really want that you do the hard work at this level. You do the hard work and then these bits, they will be playing in your brain, playing in your mind so smoothly that that is something which would be so musical. So over here, you will see, it, it would seem that even, even when we'll be studying IPv6, even when we'll be studying the routing, even when we'll be studying all the access control list security, we'll be going by this method only. And then suddenly when I'll show you, okay, okay now do it like this. You'll say then why on earth we were, we were doing so much of mazduri. But sir, that is the reason that you will be so precise and you'll be so accurate in your calculations because you have done that mazduri. So even those shortcuts, right? Sometimes they are good, but in your mind, this entire thing should play and it has got tremendous value especially when you'll be going for all those high level of access lists or when you'll be going for wildcard mask or when you'll be jumping some of the bits so at that point this will make sense because yes if the bit is one in case of subnet mask that means that bit is either representing network or it is representing subnet how to figure out? Just watch the first number. This number is 20. That means this is class A. That means first 8 bits, they are of network only. Now, if it is slash 8, instead of slash 8, if it is slash 11, so that means rest of the 3 bits, they are used for subnetting. So just by looking at these, within split seconds, you'll be able to take so much of judgment. Then I'll show you as we'll proceed in our series. I'll show you that sometimes when you are lost in the network, then how to really recover the things. What if, if one of the router is burnt and then you have got rest of the networks and you have not even backed up. So then what will you do? How can you really figure out all those networks, right? It is at that point, every piece of this information, what you are learning will be of so such a help. Okay, so coming back to this class A, so we know that default mask is 255000 and yes, you speak along with me, it will make a big difference. So next step, what would be the next step? Next step would be to find out how many bits to be borrowed. So we'll put the formula. What was the formula? 2 raised to x minus 2 is equal to what number should I write over here? Number of subnets needed. How many subnets needed? 50 because 50 departments, 50 people are there to eat cake. So we have to put 50 pieces. So 2 raised to x minus 2 is equal to 50. All right. Next is 2 raised to x equal to 52. What should be the value of x? In other words, how many bits should we borrow? So we say 1, 9, right? So 2, 4, 8 16 32 64 yes this 64 number is definitely bigger than 52 so 1 bit 2 bit 3 bit 4 bit 5 bit 6 bit all right if we borrow 6 bits so then we are happy we are comfortable so chalo let's borrow 6 bits when we borrow 6 bits the first person to inform is the mask because it is the mask who is telling 
that how many bits you can really borrow we are dealing with class a so it was 255 so this was network and then one two three four five six seven eight and then all those octets we said six bits to be borrowed again same least used right that sadela ball pen right we won't give our fountain pen we'll give our that ball pen and so one two three four five six cut take these six bits so one 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 rest all are zero so we'll declare this zone as subnet zone and these are all host so this is 255 dot what would be the value of this we can calculate 128 plus 64 is 192 plus this 32 is 224 plus 16 this is 240 240 plus 8 is 248 and this is 252 right that similar to that song of breathless easy way we are not using this bit we are not using this bit this is one this is two two plus one is three are baba when everyone is one so it is 255 minus three so that was 252 right so this is 252.0.0 and yes this is what this is subnet mask and we can also write it like slash what number what number hmm? what number should i write eight over here and six over here so eight plus six so that would be 14. so whether i write like 255 252 or i like write like slash 14 it is one in the same all right going back to this half work is done and this is like our 36th department 36th department is telling give me the range so second portion is range of 36th department range of 36 department so binary of 36 binary of 36 would be remember start with 32 because 64 is something which we won't take we'll take 32 right then so we are so near all we have to do take is 4 so 16 we don't want 8 we don't want 4 we do want 2 we don't want 1 we don't want so this will come 1 0 0 1 0 0 how musical <laughs> right so this is the binary of 36 and we'll place this thing into our network yes you are right we'll call our network and where is our network our network is here it is 20 right so let's call this network all the way down so that is 20.000 so here it is 20.0.0.0 this is network so 20.12345 cut one two dot one two three four five six seven eight dot one two three four five six seven eight okay and we'll place this thing over there so one zero zero one zero zero rest all are zero so this is 20 dot this would be 128 right and this would be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 128 plus 16. That would be 144 dot 0 dot 0. This is nothing but 
it's our 36th subnet header because our next work is to find out the range and that is the easiest thing because range is first host to last host first host to last host first host has always been so easy all 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and last one 1 so it is 20.144.0.1 done next the last host for last host every bit is 1 so 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 and last one should be zero you know the reason otherwise it will become a broadcast right so here we calculate this this is one plus two three so this three is to be added into this right because this part this part we already know that it is 144 so 144 plus three it would be 147 dot all these are one so bindas this is 255 and this portion we know it this is 254 54 done that's the range of 36th subnet whose header is 214400 and we are planning for 50 subnets so that's why our subnet mask in this case is 255.252.0.0 or we can also write it like slash 14 because this is 8 and this is 6 8 bits which are for network 6 bit which are for subnet so this number represents number of bits number of bits for network plus subnet right so we settled class a class b now we go for class c now class c is is very specific there is something very interesting thing about it and as you will calculate you will come to know so let's take one example 200 dot 200.20.0 yes it is class c why it is class c not because say it has got three octets with some number no it is class c because of this first octet so let's see i just remove this thing and let's say if i write 200.0.0.0 which class it is is it class a no it is class c only and actually it is class c because of this number and these zero zero they represent the network so when it would come to the borrowing part remember we can't ask them because they are part of network we can only talk to host it is bichara this host he is so generous he'll say koi baat nahi. i'll give you the bits which you really want so let's calculate this thing right so this is like our network 200 000, and we want this time say 11 networks right a good number 11 networks that means 11 sub networks right 11 subnets and we would like to calculate the range of let's say seventh okay range of seventh same formula going bit fast 2 raised to x minus 2 is equal to 11 that comes to 2 raised to x is equal to 13 2 4 8 16 1 2 3 4 so i have to borrow four bits so we say four bits to be borrowed right to be borrowed but because this is class c so class c will be having 
dot 255 we can't even tell them because they all are networks 1234 this is our generous host and we are telling give me four bits so he'll say okay half bit are yours so i'll just write now my host over here this is host and that's your subnet we mark them one and that fetches the value 255 255 255 dot 240 240 128 64 32 and 16 alternate add 128 plus 32 that would be 160 64 plus 16 is 80 8 3 is a 240 right so this is our subnet mask right uh, that's mask should i write it properly it is our subnet mask okay hmm so if this is our subnet mask then we have to calculate the range of seventh so range of seventh seventh subnet binary of seven four plus two plus one so it is one 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 now we call our major network our network was 200 zero zero right 200 zero zero the whole network portion would come so 200 zero zero something which we can't touch one two three four one two three four cut this is subnet this is this is host and these are all networks 111 would land over here 111 and this is 0 right reason why 0 because 7 or you write 07 or you write 007 well 007 is James Bond but its meaning is same right it cannot be 7 cannot be equal to 70 cannot be equal to 700 so that's why we'll fill this thing over here 0 okay so this is 128 not using 64 32 and 16 or add 64 plus 16 that would come to 80 and this is 32 so that gave us the answer 200.0.0.112112 that is nothing but it is our seventh subnet header good one and then all we need to do is the final calculation that is the range first host last host first host would be 0001 so this one is to be added into this so it would be 200.0.0.113 that's the first host and the last one let's change color 1 1 1 and 0 right so this would be 1 we won't take this would be 2 4 8 so 8 plus 2 10 14 so this time we'll be adding 14 into this and which would fetch us the final value 200.0.0. This is 112 plus 14. So this is 1, 2, 6. Interestingly, what would be the broadcast? The broadcast would be 200.0.0.127. Well, this gives us one more idea that it is not necessary that every time if it is 255 then and then it is broadcast right otherwise every time we have seen that usually the broadcast is like 255 but remember it is not so that whenever there is broadcast it has to be 255 the whole idea is broadcast means all host bits all host bits are one if all host bits are one then and then it is a 
broadcast right so this was about three types of calculations class a class b and class c for the practice i am giving you a small practice i'll definitely check the comments once you will start typing the answers on it right so do write down the answers of these these practice say 20 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 these are the subnets needed subnets needed are say 47 and you have to figure out the range of first and 13th the second one second one 150 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 this time our requirement is say 29 subnets you have to calculate the range of first and 19th and finally we have third network which is 201 dot 20 dot 0 dot 0 and our requirement is very less our requirement is just three networks and in which you have to calculate the range of second network so this is for practice do calculate and put it into the comments once you'll do this thing correctly i'll give you more and more practice so this was about the music of ip address the next time when we'll meet next sunday we shall be discussing about ipv6 now in ipv6 it is the hexadecimal calculations etc right we'll start with same way we'll start with the very basic and then we'll continue all the types of ipv6 once the ipv6 is clarified then we'll be going for all those conversions that how to handle ipv4 and v6 together Thank you so much and we meet again very soon. Bye-bye.